Why not? Great. Great. Yeah, of okay. course. Um, I mean, there's another mouse. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't see another mouse. I'm going to need you to change your name. Why don't you guys explain, if, if someone wants to explain to me how I can add more people, explain it to me. But in the meantime, let's just To be fair, it. it's 5.07, and if people didn't show up at like 4.58, it was sort of like, you know. Drew gets me. I just, okay. you know, show up on time to things. It's not that hard, people. Um, okay. Well, also, okay. we're recording it. So if anyone's like, I, all I wanted to do was join, and I didn't get to, and my heart is broken. We can be like, cool, we recorded it. You can watch it, you can pause it, you can like watch it a multiple times, you know? So I'm not worried, let's, we should start. We go definitely know it, that it's <laughs> All right, here we go. 10 Things I Hate About You commences now. Exterior, Padua High School, day. Welcome to Padua High, your typical upper, upper middle class high school in Seattle, Washington. Two cookie cutter cute girls sing along in their car to a bit of popular fluff music. Kat Stratford, uh, trying hard not, what? This is already a mess. Kat Stratford, this is, okay, sorry. This, I didn't read this ahead of time. Uh, okay, wait, sorry, I have another song. and she's pretty. Yes. <laughs> Cat hurries toward the front door of what appears to be the Wayne Manor version of an ordinary high school. She approaches another cookie cutter cutie pasting an advert for prom on the wall and tears it down in passing. Hey! Interior guidance counselor's office day. Cameron James, a clean cut, easygoing new kid at school with an optimistic, innocent face sits facing Miss Perky, a conservative spinster stereotype turned on its head. Wow. She's in the middle of composing some racy lines from her pulp romance novel in progress on her laptop. So Cameron, here you go. Nine schools in 10 years, my, my, army brat. Yeah, my dad's a- That's enough. I'm sure you won't find Padua any different than your old school. Same little ass wipe shit for brains everywhere. Excuse me, did you just say- Am I in the right office? Not anymore, you're not. I've got deviants to see and a novel to finish. Now scoot, scoot. Okay, thanks. Cameron rises to leave and passes Patrick Verona, a smug, long-haired long Australian who's on his way in. Miss Perky looks down oh. at her file and up at Patrick. Patrick Verona, I see we're making our visits a weekly ritual. Oh, Gives so him a dis the, oh sorry. Dad. Only so we can have these moments together. Should I uh, get the lights? Oh, very clever, kangaroo boy. Says here you exposed yourself in the cafeteria. I was joking with the lunch lady. It was a bratwurst. Bratwurst? Aren't we optimistic? Next time, keep it in your pouch, okay? Scoot! Bratwurst. <laughs> Interior school hallway day. Michael Ekman, a typical overachieving brainy senior with a young Republican sense of style, introduces himself to Cameron among the bustle of the hall. Michael Ekman, I'm supposed to show you around. Oh, hi. Thank God. You know, normally they send down one of those audio video geeks. You know, I do. I know what you mean. Yeah. An audio video geek pushing a cart full of film equipment rolls along alongside them. Michael, where should I put those slides? Michael? <laughs> so, uh, Cameron, here's the breakdown. Over here, you got your basic beautiful people. Now listen, unless they talk to you first, don't bother. But wait, is that your role or theirs? Watch. Hey there. Geek. See that? The jock and his friends glare as if offended as the two walk away. Exterior school courtyard day. Groups of students stand around. Michael and Cameron continue their walk. To the left, we have the coffee kids. Whoa, that was Costa Rican, butthead. Very edgy. Don't make any sudden moves around them. You step down and pass a table full of white boys with dreadlocks and prerequisite Jamaican berets. What? And these delusionals are the white Rasta. 
Uh, they're uh, big Marley fans. They think they're black. Semi-political, but mostly... Smoke a lot of weed. Yeah. They now approach a few kids dressed as urban cowboys. These guys. Wait, wait, let me guess. Cowboys? Yeah, but the closest they've come to a cow is McDonald's. Ha! <laughs> McDonald's. They approach a group of studious-looking teens who are bent over textbooks at a table. These are your future MBAs. We're all Ivy League accepted. Yuppie Greed is back, my friends. Hey, guys. How you doing? One of them looks annoyed and musters something about Bogey. It is, in fact, Bogey Levenstein himself, leader of the academic geeks. Why does he mutter his own name? Maybe he just likes to speak in the third person. Yesterday, I was their god. What happened? Bogey Levenstein started a rumor that I... that I'd buy my Izod's in an outlet mall. So they kicked you out? Hostile takeover. But don't worry, they'll pay. Now, over here... Oh. My. God. Bianca. A young blonde girl walks by in slow motion. Cameron is in deep... Smit? Who wrote this? This was like a transcript made by a fan. No, Kiwi did not write this. Oh, right, yeah, this is a a direct... This is a fan transcript, I should also say. So, just Ah. bear with me. What group is she in? The don't even think about it group. That's Bianca Stratford, a sophomore. I burn. I pine. I perish. Ah, of course you do. You know, she's beautiful and deep. Pure. Bianca walks with her friend Chastity, a cute and seemingly less loquacious version of herself. Yep. See, there's a difference between like and love, because I like my Skechers, but I love my Prada backpack. But I love my Skechers. That's because you don't have a Prada backpack. Oh. Listen, forget her. Incredibly uptight father, and it's a widely known fact that the Stratford sisters aren't allowed to date. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Interior English class day. A room full of bored seniors doodle and stare off into space. Mr. Morgan, an educated, no-nonsense man in his early 30s, presides. Okay then, what did everyone think of The Sun Also Rises? I loved it. It was so romantic. Kat, the girl we saw as we entered the school, is wearing a camo top in preparation for her daily war against high school ignorance. Romantic? Hemingway? He was an abusive alcoholic misogynist who squandered half of his, half of his life hanging around Picasso trying to nail his leftovers. The other students roll their eyes. Joey Donner, a slicked back knockoff of Slater from Saved by the Bell, makes fun of her from his row. As opposed to a bitter, self-righteous hag who has no friends? A few Pipe giggles. Down. <laughs> Pipe down, Chachi. I guess in this society, being male and an asshole makes you worthy of our time. What about Sylvia Plath? Or Charlotte Bronte? Or Simone de Beaudois? Patrick suddenly steps into the classroom late. What do I miss? The oppressive patriarchal values that dictate our education. Oh, good. <laughs> he immediately turns and leaves. Hey, hey, uh, Mr. Morgan, is there any chance we could get Kat to take her Midol before she comes to class? More Snickers from the class. Someday you're gonna get bitch slapped and I'm not gonna do a thing to stop it. And Kat, I wanna thank you for your point of view. I know how difficult it must be for you to overcome all those years of upper middle class suburban oppression. It must be tough. But the next time you storm around the PTA crusading for better lunch meat or whatever it is you white girls complain about, ask them why they can't buy a book written by a black man. Harley. Two two of the white Rasta kids from earlier take up his cry of inequality. That's right, Mon. Don't even get me started on you. <laughs> they grumble apologetically and quickly shut up. Cat is fuming again. Anything else? Yeah, go to the office. You're pissing me off. What? Mr. Morgan. Peter. Cat gets up in a tiff and on her way out, hits Joey in the face with her books. Oh. Interior guidance counselor's office day. Miss Perky sits in front of her laptop composing her slutty novel. <laughs> Undulating with desire, Adrian removes her crimson cape, ex- 
excitable, stiff, and Judith. Judith appears what? at the door. What's another word for engorged? I'll look it up. Okay. Whoa. Cat approaches the office and overhears Miss Perky searching for the right word. Swollen, turgid. Tumescent. Perfect. I hear you were terrorizing Mr. Morgan's class again. Expressing my opinion is not a terrorist action. The way you express your opinion to Bobby Ridgeway? By the way, his testicle retrieval operation went quite well, in case you're interested. I still maintain that he kicked himself in the balls. The point is, Cat. Cat! People perceive you as somewhat... Tempestuous? Heinous bitch is the term used most often. You might want to work on that. Thank you. Cat rises from her chair. As always, thank you for your excellent guidance. I'll let you get back to Reginald's quivering member. Cat leaves. Quivering member. I like that. Exterior school courtyard day. Joey and his cohort are standing around people, or standing around people watching. They notice Bianca and Chastity entering the courtyard, and he calls Joey's attention to Bianca. Virgin alert. Joey turns to look at Bianca. The girls pass by, noticing Joey. Looking good, ladies. They're out of reach, even for you. No <laughs> one's out of reach for me. You want to put money on that? Money I've got. This I'm going to do for fun. Across the way, Cameron and Michael have been watching Bianca and Cameron, uh, Bian watching Bianca, and Cameron notices Joey's admiration. Who's that guy? That's Joey Donner. He's a jerk off and a model. He's a model? A model. Mostly regional stuff. But. He's rumored to have a tube sock ad coming out. Really? Really. <laughs> Man, look at her. Is she always so vapid? How can you say that? She's totally... Conceited? What are you talking about? There's more to her than you think. I mean, look. Look at the way she smiles. And look at her eyes, man. She's totally pure. I mean, you're missing what's there. No, Cameron. No. What's there is a snotty little princess wearing a strategically planned sundress to make guys like us realize we can never touch her, and guys like, uh, Joey realize they want to. She, my friend, is what we'll spend the rest of our lives not having. Put her in the spank bank. Move on. No. Move on. No. Oh, you're wrong about her. I mean, you know, uh, not about the spanking part, but the rest. You're wrong. All right. I'm wrong. You want to take a shot? Be my guest. She's actually looking for a French tutor. Are you serious? That's perfect. Can you speak French? Well, no, but I will. Exterior school parking lot day. Kat and Mandela, her best friend, in quasi-Renaissance clothes, walk towards Kat's car. Joey pulls up beside them in his red sports car. Hey, your little Rambo look is out, Kat. Didn't you read last month's Cosmo? Run along. They continue walking. Further along, Bianca and Chastity are walking, embroiled in meaningful conversation. I know you can be overwhelmed, and you can be underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? I think you can in Europe. Joey pulls up alongside them. Hey, ladies, would you sweet young things like a ride? Careful they on the weather. Sorry, they hop in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, careful on the leather. Across the lot, Kat and Mandela watch this display from inside Kat's clunker. That's a charming new development. It's disgusting. Meanwhile, Michael has mounted an old motorcycle equipped with a plastic dork basket on the handles. He speeds a little bit out of control, kills the engine in front of Kat's car. Pissed off, she shouts out the window. <sighs> Remove head from sphincter, then drive. Michael regains control and pulls out of the way to where Cameron has been watching. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Just a minor encounter with the shrew, your girlfriend's sister. What? That's Bianca's sister? Mm-hmm. The mewling Rampalian wretch herself. Stay cool, bro. They jet off once again, risking another near collision. 
They end up flying right off the road and sliding halfway down a grassy hill. They recover their composure and realize half the school is watching from the top of the hill. They raise their hands in the air and give a victory yell, drawing cheers from the crowd. Yeah. Interior <laughs> Stratford House, day. Walter Stratford, Cat and Bianca's overly protective father, an obstetrician, enters through the front door, rifling through the mail. Hello, Katerina. Make anyone cry today? Sadly, no, but it's only 4.30. Bianca walks in and kisses him on the cheek. Hi, Daddy. Hello, Precious. And where have you been? Nowhere. Walter is inspecting a letter. What's this? It says Sarah Lawrence? <gasps> Uh, honey, that's great, but isn't Sarah Lawrence on the other side of the country? That's the basis of its appeal. Yeah, I thought we decided you were going to stay here and go to UW like me. Be a husky. No, you decided. Oh, okay, so you just pick up and leave. Is that it? Let's hope so. Ask Bianca who drove her home. Cat, don't change the... Drove? Who drove you home? Now, don't get upset, Daddy, but there's this boy. Who's a flaming imbecile. Please. And I think he might ask me. Please. I think I know what he's going to ask you, and I think I know the answer. No. It's always no. What are the house rules? No dating till you graduate? No dating till you graduate. That's it. Daddy, that's so unfair. All right. You want to know what's unfair? This is for you, too. This morning, I delivered a set of twins to a 15-year-old girl. Do you want to know what she said to me? I'm a slut who should have made my sleazy boyfriend wear a condom. Close, but no. She said, I should have listened to my father. She did <clears throat> not. Well, that's what she would have said if she wasn't so doped up. Can we focus on me for a second, please? I'm the only girl in school who's not dating. Oh, no, you're not. Your sister doesn't date. And I don't intend to. And why is that again? Have you seen the un unwashed mint screens that go to the school? Where did you come from, Planet Loser? As opposed to Planet, look at me, look at me. Okay, here's how we solve this run. Old rule out, new rule, Bianca can date when she does. But she's a mutant, what if she never dates? Then you'll never date. Ooh, I like that. I'll get, a, I'll get sleep at night. The deep slumber of a father whose daughters aren't out being impregnated. His beeper goes off and he heads for the door. Cat heads for the stairs. We'll talk about Sarah Lawrence later. Fine. Wait, Daddy! I gotta go. He leaves. Can't you find a sad enough loser to take you to the movies so I can have just one date? Sorry. Looks like you'll just have to miss out on the witty repartee of Joey Eat Me Donner. You suck! You make, you make you fun of me. You have a line. Oh! You suck. <laughs> <laughs> Interior tutoring room day. Cameron sits at a table prepping for the French lesson he has scheduled with Bianca. She arrives and plops down across from him. Can we make this quick? Roxanne Corin and Andrew Barrett are having an incredibly horrendous breakup on the quad again. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. I thought we'd start with pronunciation, if that's all right with you. Not the hacking and gagging and spitting part, please. Well, there is an alternative. French food? We could eat some together Saturday night? You're asking me out? That's so cute. What's your name again? Cameron, listen, I know that your dad doesn't let you date, but I thought that if it was for French class, it... Oh, wait a minute. Curtis? Cameron. My dad just came up with a new rule. I can date when my sister does. You're kidding. Well, let me ask you, do you like sailing? Because I read about this place that rents out boats. A boku problemo, Calvin. In case you haven't heard, my sister's a particularly hideous breed of loser. Yeah, yeah. I noticed she's a little antisocial. Why is that? Unsolved mystery. She used to be really popular, and then it was like she got sick of it or something. There is a bet as to why, but I'm pretty sure she's just incapable of human interaction. Plus, she's a bitch. 
Well, yeah, but I'm sure, you know, that there's lots of guys who wouldn't mind out going out with a difficult woman. I mean, you know, people jump out of airplanes, ski off cliffs. It would be like extreme dating. You think you could find someone that extreme? Yeah, sure. Why not? Bianca touches Cameron's arm. Would you do that for me? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I could look into it. Exterior, a stairwell on campus, day. Michael leads Cameron down a set of concrete steps to a secret gathering of dating candidates for Kat. Now, I have gathered a group of guys. Couldn't be more perfect. Padua's finest. <laughs> they enter a room wherein waits the very motley crew of the most unlikely specimens one would expect. Hi, how you doing? Would any of you be interested in dating Katarina Stratford? <laughs> well, I've never been that ripped. Maybe if we were the last two people alive and there were no sheep. Are there sheep? Interior biology class day. Several dissection charts of frog anatomy hang on the walls. The class is busy dissecting frogs. Michael and Cameron, naturally, are lab partners. Patrick and his punk rock friend Scurvy are hacking away at their own specimen behind them. Did I or did I not tell you it was pointless? No one will go out with her. Patrick pulls hey. out a butterfly knife and impales the frog violently with it. Hey, what about him? Him? No, no. Don't look at him, okay? He's a criminal. I heard he let a state trooper on fire. He just did a year in San Quentin. Yeah, well, then at least he's horny. I'm serious, man. He's whacked. He sold his own liver on the black market for a new set of speakers. Patrick has taken out a cigarette just as he lights it on the Bunsen burner. Scurvy seizes it and snuffs it out. Patrick plays with the Bunsen burner instead. He's our guy. Patrick notices them watching him and they quickly turn away. Interior woodshop day. Uh, students nailing pieces of wood. Cameron and Michael enter. Cameron approaches Patrick. Hi, how you doing? Listen. I, uh, okay, later then. Interior hallway day. Michael is staring through the new window in Cameron's French book. How do we get him to date Cap? I don't know. I mean, uh, we could pay him, but we don't have any money. Yeah, well, what we need is a backer. What's that? Someone with money who's stupid. Interior, ca interior cafeteria day. Joey and his pals sit at a table while Joey draws a pair of boobs on a cafeteria tray with a marker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michael walks up and sits at the table, <laughs> casual as can be. Not a peach fruit roll-up? Because you don't see that many of those. Joey's friend grabs his wrist as he reaches for the roll-up. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. His wrist is released as he withdraws his hand. Are you lost? No, no actually, I, I just came by to chat. We don't chat. Well, actually, I thought that I'd run an idea by you, just to see if you're interested. I'm not. Well, hear me out now. Joey grabs Michael by the side of the head and proceeds to draw a penis on his cheek with a magic marker. Michael suffers the indignity and speaks undaunted. You want Bianca, right? But she can't go out with you because her sister is this insane head case and no one will go out with her, right? Does this conversation have a purpose? What I think you need to do is you need to hire a guy who'll go out with her. Someone who doesn't scare so easy. Michael points to Patrick, who sits with scurvy. Patrick spits a stone from a piece of fruit at his tray. That guy? I heard he ate a black duck once. Everything but the beak and feet. Clearly, he's a solid investment. What's in it for you? Hey, I'm walking down the hall and say hello to you. You say hello to me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You're cool by association. I'll think about it. Michael looks pleased. Bob's his head as if grooming to music. We're done now. Yeah. Walks to the back of the room where Cameron waits anxiously. What are you doing getting him involved? 
relax now, relax. We let him pretend he's calling the shots. While he's setting things up, you have time with Bianca. That is a good idea. Cameron leaves. Exterior hill overlooking the stadium day. Wasn't it Lowenstein? Bogey Lowenstein has gathered his club. It is of in the movie. It is Lowenstein. I just rewatched the movie last night. Mm -hmm. Bogey Lowenstein has gathered his club of future yuppies for a golf lesson. Now remember, guys, grip it and rip it. He hits a golf ball down into the stadium field where it is collected by a kid holding a basket of balls. The field is filled with students exercising. The women's soccer team is practicing. Joey makes his way toward Patrick, who is sitting with scurvy and smoking. Hey, how you doing? I, uh, I had some great duck last night. Do I know you? <laughs> See that girl? Yeah. That's Kat Stratford. I want you to go out with her. Yeah, sure, Spocky. Look, I can't take out her sister until Kat starts dating. You see, their dad's whacked out. He's got this rule where the girls... Oh, that's a touching story. It really is not my problem. Would you be willing to make it your problem if I provide generous compensation? You're going to pay me to take out some chick. Mm -hmm. How much? 20 bucks. Cat violently body checks another girl and knocks her down. Fine, 30. Well, let's think about this. We go to the movies, that's uh, 15 bucks. We get popcorn, that's uh, 53. And uh, she wants raisin nuts, right? So uh, we're looking at 75 bucks. This ain't a negotiation. Take it or leave it, trailer park. 50 bucks and we've got a deal, Fabio. Joey hands him 50 bucks. Exterior soccer field day. Kat and the rest of the team complete their practice session. Mr. Chapin, the coach, calls the girls in over his megaphone. Great practice, everybody. Patrick snuffs out a cigarette and approaches Kat. Hey there, girly. How you doing? I'm like a pig, actually. And yourself? Now there's a way to get a guy's attention, huh? My mission in life. But obviously, you've, I've struck your fancy, so you see, it worked. The world makes sense again. She walks away. He follows. Pick you up Friday, then. Oh, right. Friday. Uh-huh. Might I take you to places you've never been before? <laughs> like where? The 7-Eleven on Broadway? Do you even know my name, Screwboy? Uh, no, a lot more than you think. Doubtful. Very doubtful. She walks away quickly, leaving him standing alone. Across the field, Cameron and Michael watch. We are screwed. Hey, no, hey. I don't want to hear that delete defeatist attitude. I want to hear you upbeat. We are screwed. There you go. <laughs> As they watch, the coach gets hit with a golf ball. Down. Cut back to Bogey and his group of NBA. Run, Bogey! Bogey is motionless, a super cheese smile glued to his face. Interior Stratford house, bathroom, night. Cat washes her face at the sink. Bianca enters behind her. Have you ever considered a new look? I mean, seriously, you could have some definite potential buried under all this hostility. Not hostile, I'm annoyed. Why don't you try being nice? People wouldn't know what to think. You forget, I don't care what people think. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You don't always have to be who they want you to be, you know. I happen to like being adored, thank you. Where did you get those pearls? They're moms. And you've what, been hiding them for three years? N no, daddy found them in a drawer last week. So what, you're just gonna start wearing them now? It's not like she's coming back to claim them. And besides, they look good on me. Trust me, they don't. Exterior, downtown street day. Kat emerges from a store. Patrick is waiting for her, leaning casually against the fender of her car. Nice ride, vintage Fendus. Following me? I was in the laundromat. I saw your car. I came over to say hi. Hi. Not she a big talker. No, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big talker. <laughs> Not a big talker, huh? 
depends on the topic. My, fender, my fenders don't really whip me into a verbal frenzy. You're not afraid of me, are you? Afraid of you? Why would I be afraid of you? Well, most people are. Well, I'm not. Well, maybe you're not afraid of me, but I'm sure you've thought about me naked, huh? <laughs> Am I that transparent? <laughs> I want you. I need you. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. She opens the door and forces him out of the way. She starts to pull out, but is blocked in by Joey's sports car, which pulls up perpendicular to her car and parks. He emerges from the car, heads for the store. What is it, asshole day? Hey, do you mind? Not at all! He continues on into the store. Cat stares at him in disbelief, then her car smashes into his car. You, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Interior Stratford House night. Walter paces as Kat sits calmly on the couch. Whoops! My insurance does not cover PMS. Well, then tell them I had a seizure. Is this about Sarah Lawrence? Are you punishing me because I want you to stay close to home? Are you punishing me because mom left? You think you could leave her out of this? Fine, then stop making decisions for me. I'm your father. That's my right. So what I want doesn't matter? You're 18, you don't know what you want, and you won't know what you want till you're 45, and if you get it, you'll be too old to use it. I want to go to an East Coast school. I want you to trust me to make my own decisions, and I want you to stop trying to control my life just because you can't control yours. Oh yeah, well you know what I want? Beep, 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 beep. We'll continue this later. Can't wait. She heads out of the room and is intercepted by Bianca, who's just off the phone. Did you just maim Joey's car? Yeah, it looks like you're gonna have to take the bus. Has the fact that you're completely psycho managed to escape your attention? Daddy! <laughs> Cat walks away. Interior <laughs> hallway day. Patrick shuts his locker, revealing Joey's angry visage glowering next to him. When I shell out 50, I expect results. Yeah, I'm on it. Watching the bitch violate my car doesn't count as a date. And if you don't get any, I don't get any. So let's go get some. Joey starts to walk off. I just up my price. What? A hundred bucks a date in advance. Forget it. Forget a sister then. Joey thinks for a frustrated moment, then peels another 50 out of his wallet. You better hope you're as smooth as you think you are, Verona. Patrick takes the money with a smile. Interior shop class day. Michael and Cameron enter the class. Scurvy brushes by them. Go. No, you go. I went before. Cameron makes his way to where Patrick is working at the buffer? It's like a sander or something, whatever. We know what you're trying to do with Catch Stratford. Oh, is that right? And what do you plan to do about it? Help you out. Was that? The situation is, my man Cameron here has a major Jones for Bianca Stratford. Now what is it with this chick? She has beer flavored nipples? Hey! I think I speak correctly when I say that Cameron's love is pure. Purer than, say, Joey Donner's. Look, I'm in on this for the cash. Donner can plow whoever he wants. Okay, there will be no plowing. Patrick! Ah! Uh... Pat, let me explain something to you here. We set this whole thing up so Cameron can get the girl. Cameron, Joey's just a pawn. So you two are gonna help me tame the wild beast? We'll do some research. We'll find out what she likes. We are your guys. And he means that in a strictly non-prison movie type of way. Let's start here. Now, Friday night, Bogey Lowenstein is having a party. It's the perfect opportunity. An opportunity for what? For you to take out Cat. Think about it. Patrick walks away, leaving Michael and Cameron grinning at each other. And for a little payback, this is gonna be some party. Close up on a party invitation Michael holds up. It advertises a wine and cheese party. Transition! The words wine and cheese are replaced by free beer. Don't call, just show up, are printed at the bottom of next to Bogie's address in Seattle. Let's do this. Ah, wait, hang on, hang on. 
slow motion shot of them dumping a pile of flyers down the school stairwell. Students' hands reach out and grab them as they fall. Interior, hallway, day. Joey stands at his open locker with Bianca. Okay, now this is important. Which do you like better? He holds up two identical glamour model photos. In one, he's wearing a white shirt. In the other, a black shirt. Um, I think I like the white shirt better. Yeah, it's more... Pensive. Damn, I was going for thoughtful. So you're going to bogey low and brow thing on Friday night? Yeah, I might. Good, because, you know, I'm not going to bother if you won't be there. See you there. Go to class. <laughs> okay. Bye. She walks away, turns to a mirror hanging in his locker and winks at himself, then unhappily adjusts an out-of-place hair. Exterior, under a bridge, day. Bianca and Cameron are on a nice walk together. No one's around. So have you heard about Bogie Lowenstein's party? Yes, and I really, really, really want to go, but I can't, not unless my sister goes. Yeah, I know. I'm working on that. But so far, she's not going for my guy. She's not a... Katie Lang fan? No. I found a picture of Jared Leto in her drawer once, so I'm pretty sure she's not harboring same-sex tendencies. Okay, so that's the kind of guy she likes? Pretty guy? I don't know. All I've ever heard her say is that she'd die before dating a guy that smokes. Okay, all right. What else? You're asking me to investigate the inner workings of my sister's twisted mind? I don't think so. Well, nothing else has worked. I mean, we need to go behind enemy lines here. Interior, Kat's bedroom, day. Bianca rifles through Kat's drawers while Cameron watches with notable interest. Okay, here we go. Class schedule, reading list, date book, coffee tickets, um, concert tickets, uh, black panties. What does that tell us? She wants to have sex someday, that's what. She could just like the color. You don't buy black lingerie unless you want someone to see it. Oh, so uh, can I see your room? No, a girl's room is a very personal thing. Oh. Exterior biker bar night. Michael and Cameron arrive on Michael's dumpy motorbike and park next to... And they pull up on their on a motorbike. <laughs> nice bike. Yeah, you think so? The biker roars off without answering. Interior biker bar night. Michael and Cameron make their way through the surly denizens of the saloon who watch them in wonder. Wow. Is this what a bar looks like? Don't touch anything. You may get hepatitis. They head toward Patrick, who plays pool by himself. As they pass another table, Michael picks up the eight ball, ruining the game-winning shot a tough guy is making, and tosses it back onto the table without realizing he's done. Mal. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what have you got for me? A little insight into a very complicated girl. Just one question before we start. Should you be drinking alcohol when you don't have a liver? What? Nothing, nothing. First thing, Cat hates smokers. Cameron plucks the cigarette out of Patrick's fingers and drops it on the floor. You're telling me I'm a non-smoker? Yeah, but... Just for now. And there's another problem. Bianca said that Cat likes pretty guys. Are you telling me I'm not a pretty guy? He's very pretty. He's gorgeous. He's a gorgeous guy. I wasn't sure, right? I didn't know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Likes Thai food, feminist prose, and angry girl music of the indie rock persuasion. Here's a list of CDs that she has in her room. So... I'm supposed to buy her some noodles and a book and sit around listening to chicks who can't play the instruments, right? Have you ever been to Club Skunk? My favorite band is playing there tomorrow night. Her favorite band is playing there tomorrow night. I can't be seen at Club Skunk, all right? But she'll be there. She's got tickets. Just assail your ears for one night. She has a pair of black underwear, if that helps. <laughs> Couldn't hurt, right? <clears throat> Interior club skunk night. Patrick walks down the hallway towards the stage and is eyed suspiciously by various girls in the hall. 
He enters, searches the crowd, and finds Kat dancing with Mandela. He sits at the bar. Verona, what are you doing here tonight? Kat stops dancing and shouts at her friends. I need agua. She heads for the bar. Two waters. She if spots Patrick, planning, ignoring her, and looks disgusted. If you're planning on asking me out, you might as well just get it over with. Would you mind? You're kind of ruining this for me. You're not surrounded by your usual cloud of smoke? I oh, know, I quit. Apparently they're bad for you. You did? <laughs> you know, these guys are no bikini killer raincoats, but they're not bad. You know who the raincoats are? Why don't you? I was watching you out there before. I've never seen you look so sexy. I just fucked up that whole audio cue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I <laughs> fucked it up. I'm sorry. Just pretend that the music cut out exactly as Mal said that line real loud. I've never seen you look so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come to Bogey's party with me. You never give up, do you? She begins to walk away through the crowd. Was that a yes? No. Well, was that a no? No. I'll see you at 9.30 then. Interior, Stratford living room, night. Bianca and Chastity are dolled up in party clothes and are attempting to sneak down the stairs and out the door. Walter is reading the paper, facing the opposite direction. You should have used the window. Hi, Daddy. Hi. Where are we going? Well, if you must know, a small study group of friends. Otherwise known as an orgy? Mr. Stratford, it's just a party. And hell is just a sauna. Kat comes walking down the stairs, oblivious to what's going on. Walter directs his attention towards her. You know about any party? Shrugs people and shakes expect her head. me. People expect me to be there. If Kat's not going, you're not going. Why can't you be normal? Why normal? Bogey Lowenstein's party is normal. What's a bogey Lowenstein? <laughs> Bogey's party is just a lean excuse for all the idiots of our school to drink beer and rub up against each other in hopes of distracting themselves from their pathetic emptiness of their meaningless consumer-driven consumer lives. Driven lives. <laughs> Cat stops short, surprised she's become so predictable. Can you, for just one night, forget that you're completely wretched and be my sister? Please? Please? Come on, Kat, please do this for me. Oh, fine, I'll make an appearance. Bianca and Chastity look at each other, thrilled, and burst into gleeful screams, hugging Kat from either side. It's starting. It's just a party, Daddy. I want you to wear the belly. Daddy, no. Not all night. Just around the living room for a, mil for a minute, so you can understand the full weight of your decision. He rushes to the cupboard and pulls out a padded faux pregnancy jacket. Bianca limply holds out her arms in defeat. He hangs it on her. I'm perfectly aware. Listen to me. Every time you even think about kissing a boy, I want you to picture wearing this under your halter top. You are so completely unbalanced. Uh-huh. We're going now. All right, wait a minute. No drinking, no drugs, no kissing, no tattoos, no piercings, no ritual animal slaughter of any kind. Oh God, I'm giving them ideas. Kat opens the door, and there stands Patrick. What are you doing here? I'm 30, right? She's in shock. I'm early. Whatever, I'm driving. Who knocked up your sister? <laughs> <laughs> oh, iconic scene. Oh. Interior, Michael's house, night. Cameron and Michael are preparing to go to the party. Oh, wait, why did I... Guys, I'm an idiot. Interior Michael's house night. Cameron and Michael are preparing to go to the party. Michael employs a variety of questionable beautification techniques. So, then Bianca says that I was right. That she didn't wear the Kenneth Coles with that dress because she thought it was mixing genres, right? And the fact that I noticed, and this is a direct quote, really meant something. You told me that part already. I've been thinking about it all the time. And Stop being so self-involved for one minute. How do I? You look like my great uncle Milton. I should lose the tie? Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe you're right. I'm just so nervous, you know, and I'm also very excited. I'm nervous and I'm excited. It's all very mixed up. I don't know. Okay, all right. Just calm down, all right? The last party I went to was at Chuck E. Cheese. You want to talk about some fun? <laughs> That's a good time. Exterior, Bogie Lowenstein's house, night. A huge pack of partygoers carrying kegs and ready to have some fun, charged through the night like hungry wolves descending on Bogie's well-lit upscale suburban home. Interior, Bogie Lowenstein's house, night. Bogie, the leader of the future MBAs, plays the host to some stiff-looking kids arranged on some flowery sofas in a very expensive-looking den. He hands out cigars proudly. Now remember, guys, don't touch anything. Spots one of his guests fondling a crystal vase and seizes it. Hey, what did I tell you? Puts it back where it came from as the doorbell rings. He lights up and heads for the door. That must be Nigel with the brief. Before he gets to the door, the room is stampeded with partiers. Within seconds, the house is filled to capacity. A DJ is suddenly spinning and booze is everywhere. Interior, upstairs, balcony, bogeys, night. Michael drifts through an archway with a beer in his hand and beelines for a girl. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about getting a Tercel. Yeah. That's a, that's a Toyota. She and her friends start to walk away. It's, it has dual side airbags and a spacious back seat. Across the way, Kat and Patrick come up the stairs to the balcony. Patrick encounters a very drunk and happy girl. Kiss me! She immediately falls upon... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, she embraces him and he turns her around and nudges her into the arms of a lonely guy in a chair. Kiss him. She immediately falls upon the lucky guy's lips. He manages to tear himself away for a moment as Patrick passes. Thanks, man. In doing so, he forgets about the girl and drops her to the ground. Meanwhile, Kat has made her way onto the next room where she is met by Joey. Sweet! Looking fresh tonight, pussycat. Wait, was that... Did your hairline just recede? Hey, where are you going? Away. Your sister here? Stay away from my sister. Oh, I'll stay away from your sister, but I can't guarantee she'll stay away from me. A ruckus sounds from the next room and a jock jumps in next to them. Fight! Ooh, fight! He and the jock run off to watch. Two guys are slugging it out in the den. Bogey watches in horror. Guys, please, take it outside! They wrestle and crash through the bay window onto the grass outside. Thank you. Cat pushes through the gathered crowd to get away and encounters Joey with Bianca on his arm. Hey, Cat, look who found me. Joey and Bianca walk away. She ignores Cat. Bianca, wait. Please don't address me in public. <laughs> no, wait, there's something I need to tell you. Look, I am busy enjoying my adolescence, so scamper off and do the same. Bye bye. They leave a dejected cat behind. A guy with a tray of shots sidles up next to Cat. Want one? Patrick appears behind her as she snatches a shot and downs it with the grimace of intense discomfort. Uh, what's this? Right on, sister. I've been looking all over the place for you. I'm getting trash, man. Isn't that what you're supposed to do at a party? <laughs> well, I don't know. I say do what you want to do. Funny, you're the only one. Later. She pushes away into the crowd. Interior. Bogey's living room, night. Michael spots another pair of girls and tries his luck again. He does a weak impression of an Irish jig. Lord of the dance. Hi, Heather. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> she walks away. Should have kept the tie. Cameron comes up behind him. Hey, have you seen her around here? Michael spots Bianca and Chastity coming down the stairs and points Cameron in her direction. Relax, relax. I'm telling you, follow the love, man. Cameron walks over to the girls. Hi, Bianca. Oh, hi, Cameron. Um, you know Chastity? Yeah, I think we have art together, right? Great. So, uh, you really look amazing. Thanks. Joey comes down the stairs and has overheard Cameron's compliment. We all know I look amazing. <laughs> Big giggle. 
Bianca, let's go. We're all congregating around Mr. Cuervo. Um, I'll see you around, okay? Joey and the girls walk away as Cameron stares in disbelief. Joey looks back just long enough to flash him a thumbs up. Cameron is crushed. Interior, a room in Bogie's house. Nice. Bianca walks next to Joey as he blathers about modeling. So I've got the Sears catalog thing going and the tube sock gig. That's going to be huge. And I wonder... <laughs> oh, someone falls off the roof. Sorry. Okay. Someone falls I, off the roof. I'm up for a hemorrhoid cream ad next week. I know it sounds kind of bogus, but I gotta get to, I gotta get to do some acting. He pauses again this time to place his empty can of Budweiser atop a large beer can pyramid. He then strikes a pose. You see what I did there? Uh huh. That was underwear. I'll show you bathing suit next. It's the exact same pose. Yeah, but do you see the difference? <laughs> <laughs> she turns away looking disgusted again. He notices her lack of interest and takes it in stride, turning immediately to someone behind him. Okay, I'll show you. Bianca slips away. Interior, bogey's den, night. A cowboy sits with another kid chewing tobacco. He unloads a mouthful of it into a nice crystal vase. Bogey takes the vase and moans. Bianca passes, searching the crowd, and spots Joey through an archway, striking poses for the crowd. She turns away and faces Cameron, who is obviously not happy with the evening's turn of events. Bianca decides to avoid the inevitable conflict and pulls Chastity in the opposite direction. Is it just me, or does this party all of a sudden suck? They walk away. Cameron is sad. Interior, Bogey's kitchen, night. Patrick is searching for Cat. He passes the drunk girl and lucky guy from earlier, and the guy grabs his shirt. Really, really, thank you. Patrick gives him a pat on the shoulder and moves along. He spots Kat, who is already very drunk, standing with a fresh shot in her hand. Patrick tries to remove a shot glass from her hand. Hey, uh, why don't you let me have this one, huh? No, this one's mine. She rushes off. Joey enters, ga grabbing Patrick by the shoulder, distracting him from following Kat. My man, how did you get her to do it? Do what? Act like a human. They both notice Kat has climbed up on a table in the next room and is dancing. Joey is very pleased and rushes to watch. Yeah, all right. Others form a crowd clapping and cheering her on. Bianca sees her from the balcony and rushes off. Kat completes her dance by falling off the table. Patrick catches her. Are you okay? I'm fine. She tries to sit up but falls back again. You're not fine, come on. He helps her to walk away from the table and down the hall. I just need to lie down somewhere. Uh-uh. You lie down and you'll go to sleep. Mm, sleep is good. Yeah, not if you have a concussion. <laughs> Exterior bogey's house, night. A few partygoers stand around as Patrick guides her towards a stone bench. Come on, here. Sit down. Sit. As Patrick sits cat down, Cameron comes up next to him. Hey, hey, we need to talk. I'm a little busy right now. Can you give me a second? It's off, okay? okay? The whole thing's off. What are you talking about? She never wanted me. She wanted Joey the whole time. Cameron, do you like the girl? Yeah. Yeah, and is she worth all this trouble? Well, I thought she was, but you know, I... Well... She is or she isn't. See, first of all, Joey's not half the man you are. Secondly, you don't e let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. Go for it. <laughs> Kat begins to fall off the bench and Patrick catches her again. He stands her up and they walk away. Come on. <laughs> Patrick continues walking an oblivious cat away from the party. Cameron stands there, unsure how to make use of this advice. Exterior, the street outside Bogey's house. Night. Patrick marches the cat down the street, holding her up. They head up a hill. You're so patronizing. <laughs> I'll leave it to you to use big words when you're smashed. She pushes his arm off and tries to walk on her own. I don't think so. <laughs> she falls down and stands back up again. Okay. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I told you, you may have a concussion. You don't care if I never wake up. Sure I do. Why? 
they reach a set of two swings hedged by ivy and stop. Well then, because I'd act, I'd have to start talking. <laughs> well then, because I'd have to start taking out girls who actually like me. <laughs> like you could find one. See that there? Who needs affection when I have blind hatred? Let me sit down for a while. She walks over to the swings and plops down, moving her hands to hang onto the ropes. She sits and looks at him for a moment with a smile, then falls over backward just in time to be caught again. <coughs> Jesus. Patrick sits on the other swing. So why'd you let him get to you? Who? Joey. I hate him. Well, you've chosen the perfect revenge, mainlining tequila. <laughs> well, you know what they say. <laughs> No, what do they say? Cat is asleep, her head <laughs> resting against the swings rope. He's concerned about her falling asleep with a possible concussion. No, 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 no. Cat, come on, wake up. Look at me. Listen to me. Cat, open your eyes. He slaps her and she slowly opens her eyes. Hey, your eyes have a little green in them. They make meaningful eye contact and then she vomits at his feet. <laughs> Exterior bogey Lowenstein's driveway night. Kids litter outside. Bianca and Chastity are waiting. I don't know if we should go. Joey walks up. Hey, hey a bunch of us are going to Jared's house. Ready? Uh, I have to be home in 20 minutes. You know, I don't have to be home until 2, so one more chance. Oh, man, I can't. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. Well, you want to go? Sure. Chastity. Hey, you passed. Chastity leaves with Joey. Bitch. Cameron exits the party and stops when he sees Bianca standing alone. Hey, have fun tonight? Tons. He starts to walk past her. Cameron? He stops. Do you, do you think you could give me a ride home? Interior, cat's car, night. Patrick drives as cat sits in the passenger seat. She listens to the stereo. I should do this. Do what? This. Stop she points to the radio. No, install car stereos. Yeah, start a band. My father would love that. Patrick pulls up to her house and stops the car. You don't strike me as a type that would ask your father's permission. Oh, so now you think you know me. I'm getting there. The only thing people know about me is I'm scary. Yeah, well, I'm no picnic myself. So, what's up with your dad? Is he a pain in the ass? No, he just wants me to be someone I'm not. Who? Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> Hey! Dad! Too sweet! Unprofessional dog. Okay. Uh, continue. Ah, uh, Bianca. Um, no offense or anything. I mean, I know everyone did your sister, but um, she's without. You know, you're not as vile as I thought you were. She leans toward him drunkenly. Their faces grow closer as if they're about to kiss. And then Patrick pulls away. <laughs> uh, maybe we should do this another time. Pat stares at him pissed, then gets out of the car and stomps off. Cameron's car, night. Bianca and Cameron ride in silence. He pulls up in front of her house and finally breaks it. It being the silence. <laughs> you never wanted to go sailing with me, did you? <laughs> yes, I did. No, you didn't. Well, okay. No, not actually. Well, then that's all you have to say. You always been this selfish? Yes. You know, just because you're beautiful doesn't mean you can treat people like they don't matter. I mean, I really like you, okay? I defended you when people called you conceited. I help you when you ask me to. I learned French for you, and then you just blow me off? She looks at him for a moment, then grabs his face and gives him a kiss on the lips. He's stunned. She smiles and gets out of the car without another word. Cameron looks as though he's just been told he's inherited a billion dollars as she turns, smiles, and walks away. 
And I'm back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Interior English class, English class day. Cat uh-huh. enters the class. Derek, a white Rasta, pokes fun at her for dancing at the party the night before. Cat, me lady, you sway to the rhythm of me heart. <laughs> Clem, a cowboy, <laughs> chimes in as she makes her way to her seat. <laughs> Dance for me, cowgirl. <laughs> Cat, babe, what do we owe you for the table dance? Oh, sorry. You're the whole scene. <laughs> but how is everyone's weakness? So oh, I don't know. Maybe we should ask Cat. Unless she kicked the crap out of your dumb butt, I don't want to hear about it. Now let's open our books to page 73, sonnet 141, and listen up. Oh, no. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Nope. In faith, I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they and thee a thousand errors note, but tis my heart loves what they despise, and who in despite of you is pleased to dote. Now, I know Shakespeare's a dead white guy, but he knows his shit, so we can overlook that. I want you all to write your own version of this sonnet. Uh. Yes, miss, I have an opinion about everything. Do you want this in iambic iambic pentameter? You're not gonna fight me on this? No, I think it's a really good assignment. You're just messing with me, aren't you? No, I'm really looking forward to writing it. Get out of my class! What? (laughs) (laughs) She looks confused, slowly rises and leaves. Thanks, Mr. Morgan. Shut up! (laughs) Interior hallway day. Mandela's at her locker. Drawings of William Shakespeare adorn the door. Michael walks up. Hey, that's a cool picture. What's the collar for? Is it to keep him from licking his stitches? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, I'm kidding. No, because I know you're a fan of Shakespeare. More than a fan, we're involved. Okay. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart... Courage to make love known. Macbeth, right? Right. So, listen, I have this friend. Exterior soccer field day. Cameron sits next to Patrick on the bleachers as they watch the girls practice. What'd you do to her? I didn't do anything. She would have been too drunk to remember. But the plan was working. What do you care? I thought you wanted out. Yeah, well, I did, but uh, that was until she kissed me. Where? In the car. (laughs) Michael is jogging up to them from across the jogging track, from across the track. (laughs) As he crosses it, he is nearly run over by two runners. Sorry. Dweeb, put. I'm sorry. (laughs) He sits with Cameron and Patrick. All right, I talked to her. I got the scoop. What'd she say? Hates him with a fire of a thousand suns. That's a direct quote. Thanks, Malcolm. That's very comforting of you. We don't know. She could just need a day to cool off. A soccer ball flies past them from the field, narrowly missing their heads. Cat stands menacingly, glaring at them. <laughs> Maybe two. Interior school courtyard day. Cat and Mandela walk. Cat sees a prom flyer and tears it down as the flyer posting girl watches. Hey! Can you, imagine, Deep Sorry. can you imagine who would go to that antiquated mating ritual? I would, but I don't have a date. Do you really want to get all dressed up so some Dracar Noir wearing Dexter with a boner can feel you up while we're forced to listen to a band that by definition sucks? All right, all right, we won't go. Not like I've got a dress or anything. You're looking at this from an entirely wrong perspective. We're making a statement. Oh, goody. Something new and different for us. Exterior archery field day. Mr. Shapin instructs as boys and girls shoot arrows at targets. Joey swaggers up to Bianca, who is taking careful aim. Hey there, Cupid. Hi, Joey. Concentrating awfully hard, considering it's gym class. She turns to look at him and releases the arrow at an angle. A cry is heard off camera. Ah! Ah! <laughs> can, I, can I help you? 
I want to talk to you about prom. Look, you know the deal. I can't go if Kat doesn't go. In the background, Mr. Chapin crumples to the ground with an arrow sticking out of his butt. Chastity scurries over to help him. Your sister is going. Since when? Oh, let's just say I'm taking care of it. Joey hands her an arrow and walks away. Interior hallway day. Joey hands two $100 bills to Patrick. Here you go. This should take care of the flowers, the limo, the tux, everything. Just make sure she gets to the prom. You know what? I'm sick of playing your little game. He hands back the cash. You're sick of, let's say, $300? Patrick takes the money. Interior guitar store day. Cat is playing a guitar with headphones on. Patrick comes up behind her, but decides to leave her alone. Interior bookstore day. Patrick scans the store for Cat, sees her, follows her from one row of books to the next. When they reach the end of the aisle, he confronts her. Wait, this is the best music cue in the whole movie. It's not a my Robin. <laughs> Robin took the music notes. I was busy. It's, it's Joan Arma trading. It's like, sorry. Just perfect. You do it. That was great. <laughs> now your line. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the feminine mistake? I've lost my copy. What are you doing here? I heard there was a poetry reading. You're so charming. She turns and starts to walk away. Wholesome. Unwelcome. You're not as mean as you think you are, you know that? You're not as badass as you think you are. Ooh, someone still has their panties in twist. Mm, don't for one minute think you had any effect whatsoever on my panties. Then what did I have an effect on? Other than my upchuck reflux, nothing. She heads for the door, handing him a copy of The Feminine Mystique as she leaves. <laughs> interior, cafeteria, interior cafeteria day. Cameron and Michael flank Patrick as he piles food onto his tray. You're right, she's still pissed. Sweet love, renew thy force. Hey man, don't say shit like that to me. People can hear you. Look, you embarrass the girl. Sacrifice yourself on the altar of dignity and even the score. Patrick scowls and walks away. Listen, don't say shit like that to him. People can hear you. <laughs> Interior hallway day. Patrick hands a wad of cash to, a, to an, a kid and smiles. Interior field announcer's booth day. A pair of hands are scanning the controls for the school stadium's audio setup. One hand holds a cordless microphone, the other turns up the volume on a switch labeled Field Mic Announce. Exterior, the bleachers, day. Looking down on the field where the girls are practicing soccer, Patrick stands atop the bleachers with the microphone in his hand and begins to sing an old love song to Kat. Mal, you have to sing it. Shall I? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I have to look at the chords, is that okay? Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Take your time. This is why we're all here. <laughs> we're, we're here to hear this song. Yeah. I would like you to perform it. Oh, you're a guitar too, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of this. This is cute. I dropped, oh shit, I dropped this and now it's out of tune. Ah! Okay. okay. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be like having a touch. I wanna hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived, and I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Patrick gives a signal to the kid from earlier. The kid is the leader of the school marching band, which then chimes in and begins playing the music for the song. Cat is thrilled. I Patrick love you, baby, and if it's quite all right, I need you, baby. I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say. Patrick continues singing and dancing around on the bleachers until two, two cops arrive. They grab him as the soccer team applauds his performance. He breaks oh. free and continues hamming about, spanks an officer's bum as he passes and runs away. Keep going. Oh, Do it. pretty baby. Oh, baby, yeah, I'll pray. Oh, pretty baby. Now that I've found you, stay and let me. Baby, let me love you. And he does the... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Well done. <laughs> Interior detention hall day. Patrick and several other miscreants sit quietly mulling over their misfortune as Mr. Chapin presides. He, tur he tries to sit on the edge of the desk, grimaces in pain from his arrow wound, and someone in the classroom giggles. You look pretty nervous. Yes, sir. You're sweating like a pig. Yes, sir. Your eyes are all bloodshot. Yes, sir. You've got pot, don't you? <laughs> the stoner kid hands him a bag of weed. I'm confiscating this. Turns around and sees a bag of Cheetos on another kid's desk, which he also takes. This too! Cat suddenly enters the room and approaches Mr. Shapin. Patrick looks up and sees her. Um, sir, um, I have some ideas on how we can improve the girls' soccer team. Great, let's talk about it later. <laughs> she motions to Patrick. Window. Window. As you know, we have a really big game with Hillcrest High. Patrick runs for the side of the room as she distracts Mr. Shapin. <laughs> Your bicep is huge! Oh my god! <laughs> The other one's even bigger! <laughs> you don't take steroids, do you? Because I've heard steroids can severely disintegrate your package. The classroom murmurs, including an inex inexplicable older... What? Oh, <laughs> God, ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point. Let's hope not. He hears Patrick making a creaking noise and tries to turn, but she stops him. The point is, they kick our butts every year. I was thinking I devise a plan that will enable us to finally defeat them. Which is? Patrick is sneaking toward the window behind him, next to a big sign that reads, all's quiet. Who cares what the sign says? <laughs> the, the thing that you taught us. What thing? Misdirection. I taught you that? Yeah, you or Siegfried or Roy. Anyway, that's not important. The... He tries to turn again and she grabs his chin to stop him. The thing about it is um, they look left, right? And, and then, then they're running right. And bang, we score, we win. Cat starts to panic as Patrick has yet to make it out the window. Okay, but how do we get them to look what, left? Um, I'm like this. She lifts her shirt just long enough for Patrick to escape. Everyone cheers for both the daring escape and the flashing. Okay, um, well now you've seen the plan. I'm gonna go show the plan to someone else, okay? She walks away as the classroom applauds. Exterior in the bay day. Patrick and Kat pedal a small rented boat. They are laughing together. I can't thank you enough for helping me sneak out of detention. Very cool. No problem. I thought for sure I was busted when I was climbing out the window, I tell you. So how did you keep him distracted? I dazzled him with my wits. <laughs> so, uh, what's your excuse? For? Acting the way we do? I don't, I don't like to do what people expect. Why should I live up to other people's expectations instead of my own? So you disappoint them from the start and then you're covered, right? Something like that. Then you screwed up. How? You never disappointed me. <sighs> Are you up for it? Up for what? He motions to the sign for a paintball game. <clears throat> <laughs> Exterior paintball park day. They chase each other around and get covered in paint, having a good time of it. Eventually, they end up falling down and literally rolling in the hay, caught in an embrace and a short bit of kissing before the game continues. Exterior Stratford House Day. Patrick pulls up outside Kat's house and they get out. Paint still streaks in their hair. No, none of that stuff is true. State trooper? Fallacy. Uh, dead guy in the parking lot? Rumor. The duck? PSA? Bobby Ridgeway's balls? Fact, but he deserved it. He tried to grope me in a lunch line. Fair enough. The accident. Oh, it's, it's real. I lived in Australia till I was 10. With the pygmies? Uh, close. With my mum. Where were you last year? I know the porn's cor porn career is a lie. Do you? Tell me something true. Something true. Uh, I hate peas. 
No, something real. Something no one else knows. Okay. You sweet and sexy and completely hot for me. <laughs> You're amazingly self-assured. Has anyone ever told you that? I tell myself that every day, actually. Big kiss. Go to the prom with me. Is that a request or a command? Come on, go with me. No. No, why not? No, I won't go with you. Why not? Because I don't want to. It's a stupid tradition. Well, come on, people won't expect you to go. Why are you pushing this? What's in it for you? Oh, so I need to have a motive to want to be with you. You tell me. You need therapy, you know that? Has anyone ever told you that? Answer the question, Patrick. Nothing. There is nothing in it for me, just the pleasure of your company, okay? She takes out a cigarette. She throws it away before she storms off and slams the door to the house. Interior study hall day. Cameron and Bianca sit together at a table. She stares at him. Pues je vous offrir un panel? <laughs> you looked up the French? I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Whitney, I didn't look up the script beforehand. Um, okay, I'm going to be just, doing this I in just English. used Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you may not. Où est le crayon de mon uncle? <laughs> Je ne sais pas. Perhaps it's up your ass. Wait, wait a minute. That's, that's not on this page. Let me ask you a question, Cameron. When are you going to ask me out? Oh, mon dieu. <laughs> Threw that in there. She gets up and storms off. Cameron, perplexed at this development, obviously didn't understand what she said. He flips through his French book for an explanation and evidently finds one. Mad. <laughs> <laughs> Interior hallway day. Mandela opens her locker. Hanging inside is a beautiful period style green dress with a note. She holds the dress up to read the note. The note reads Oh, fair one, join me at the prom. I will be waiting. Love, William S. She seems <sighs> clean. <laughs> Exterior Stratford House patio day. Walter does crunches on an abdominal machine. He is struggling magnificently. Uh, seven. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he stands as Bianca enters. Daddy. Hi, honey. Um, I want to discuss tomorrow night. As you know, it's the prom. The prom? He's been using a... Oh. I, yeah. yeah, he flings the stretchy thing. Cat <laughs> has a date? Well, no. Don't think you're fooling me for a second. I know who you want to bend the rules for. That hot rod, Joey. What's a hot rod? It's a... If your sister's not going, you're not going. End of story. Okay. Let's review. Cat, not interested. Me, dying to go. <laughs> you know what happens at prom? Yes, Daddy, we'll dance, we'll kiss, we'll come home. It's not quite the crisis situation you imagine. Kissing, huh? That's what you think happens? I got news for you. <laughs> Kissing isn't what keeps me up to my elbows in placenta all day long. Can we for two seconds ignore the fact that you're severely unhinged and discuss my need for a night of teenage normalcy? What's normal? Those damn Dawson's River kids sleeping in each other's beds or whatnot? <laughs> Daddy, that is so not... News for you. I'm down. I got the 411, and you are not going out and getting jiggy with some boy. I don't care how dope his ride is. <laughs> <laughs> she leaves. I'm a fool. The stretchy thing from before comes flying back onto the patio and lands in the hot tub. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Interior Bianca's room, day. Bianca lies on her bed watching the real world Seattle. A knock sounds. <laughs> It's Come important in. that you know that that's what she's watching. <laughs> <clears throat> listen, I, I, listen, I know, listen, I know you hate having to sit at home because I'm not Susie High School. Like you care. I do care, but I'm a firm believer in doing something for your own reasons and, and not someone else's. Well, I wish I had that luxury. You know, I'm the only sophomore that got asked to the prom and I can't go because you don't feel like it. Mm. Joey never told you that we went out, did he? Yeah, okay. In ninth for a month. Why? 
because he was like such a babe. But you hate Joey. Now I do. So what happened? Oh, please tell me you're joking. Just once, right after mom left. Everyone was doing it, so, so I did it. Afterwards, I told him I, I didn't want to anymore because I wasn't ready. And he got pissed and dumped me. After that, I swore I'd never do anything just because everyone else was doing it. And I haven't since, with the exception of Bogie's party and my stunning digestive pyrotechnics. How is it possible that I didn't know about this? I warned him that if he told anyone, the cheerleading squad would find out how small his dick was. Uh, okay, so why didn't you tell me? I wanted to let you make up your mind about him. Then why did you help daddy hold me hostage? It's, it's not like I'm stupid enough to repeat your mistakes. I guess I thought I was protecting you. By not letting me experience anything for myself? Not all experiences are good, Bianca. You can't always trust people you want to. Well, I guess I'll never know, will I? She rises and holds the door open for Kat, then slams it behind her. Interior, Kat's room day. Kat lies in bed, staring at the ceiling. She rolls over and looks out the window. Bianca is looking pitiful in a tire swing. Interior, living room, night. Walter sits on the couch, transfixed by an ad for an aerosol product that covers baldness. Interesting. Kat descends the stairs in an elegant blue prom dress and heads for the door. Bye, Zad. I'm going to prom. Bye. <laughs> Kat shuts the door behind her. Bianca walks into the living room. She's wearing a prom dress. Walter sees and immediately crosses to where she stands. What's that? A prom dress. Yeah, I seem to be hearing that word a lot lately. The doorbell rings and Bianca opens it. There stands Cameron in a tuxedo. Hi. Wow. I, uh... Wow. Bye, Daddy. Stop. Turn. Explain. Okay. Remember how you said I could date if Kat dated? Well, she found this guy who's actually kind of perfect for her, which is actually kind of perfect for me, because Cameron asked me to go to the prom, and I really, really, really want to go. And since Kat went, I guess I'm allowed to, based on the aforementioned rule and its previous stipulations, of course. Nice to meet you. Let's go. They dash away down the walk. I know every cop in town, bucko! Interior, prom, dance floor, night. Wait, oh, I couldn't find the Save Ferris song. Apologies in advance. Interior, prom, balcony, night. Cat ascends this grand staircase and stops. Patrick notices and comes up behind her. Wow. You too. Where'd you get that tux so last minute? No, oh, just something I had, you know, lying around. Oh. Where'd you get the dress? Oh, just something I had, you know, lying around. Listen, um, I'm sorry I questioned your motives. I was wrong. You're forgiven. Okay. Ready for prom? Yes, ma'am. Interior, Stratford doorway night. Joey arrives in a tuxedo and knocks on the door. Walter opens it. Hi, Mr. Stratford. I'm Joey. I'm here to pick up Bianca. Walter gives him an icy glare in silence and then slams the door in his face without saying a word. Interior, prom, dance floor, night. Patrick and Kat enter. Kat steps forward, looking around and spots Cameron and Bianca dancing cheek to cheek. Across the room, Mandela enters nervously in the long Elizabethan gown, hair piled on top of her head. She spots Kat and hurries over distressed. Have you seen him? Who? William, he asked me to meet him here. <laughs> oh, Mandela. Tell me you haven't progressed to full on hallucination. <laughs> Patrick looks toward the stage and nods. Mandela turns to look. Michael, in a Shakespearean-like attire, bows in their direction. She beams. He makes his way through the crowd over to her. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing something just like that. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my what a reveal. Oh, I'm committing. Oh. No, this is beautiful. <laughs> Good job. Oh, 
her. Michael kisses her hand in a courtly manner. What's happening? My playlist stopped working. Mm. Hang on. Oh, no! No, this is important. This is very important. There we go. That's better. Interior prom dance floor shortly after. Cat and Patrick clap as the band finishes a song. A new song begins and Cat recognizes it. It's by her favorite band. Oh my god, it's... I called in a favor. Cat stares in honest appreciation as the lead singer of her favorite band, clearly her favorite band is Letters to Cleo, appears on stage and makes her way to the crowd to sing directly to her. She turns back towards the stage and Patrick kisses Cat. The music plays. Interior, ladies room at the prom. Bianca is at the mirror. Chastity emerges from a stall. What are you doing here? Oh, I don't, I know you didn't think you were the only sophomore at the prom. Joey just picked me up. Well, congratulations, he's all yours. Very generous, princess. And just so you know, Joey only liked you for one reason. He even had a bet going with his friends. He was gonna nail you tonight. Bianca, very disturbed, runs away. Interior, dance floor, immediately after. Patrick and Kat continue to slow dance in good spirits. Milwaukee. What? That's where I was last year. I wasn't in jail. I don't know Marilyn Manson, and I didn't sleep with a Spice Girl, I don't think. You see, my grandpa, he was ill, so I spent most of the year on his couch watching Wheel of Fortune and making SpaghettiOs. End of story. No way. He's interrupted by Joey, pulling him aside. Hey, what's Bianca doing here with that cheese dick? I didn't pay you to take out Kat so some little punk could snake me with Bianca. Kat heard everything. Nothing here for you, huh? She leaves, Patrick follows. Meanwhile, across the room, Michael spots the altercation and dances Mandala over to Cameron and Bianca. The shit hath hitteth the fanness. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Cameron leave Mandala and Bianca and Joey, er, and Bianca and head for Joey. Across the room, Michael and Cameron approach Joey quickly. Joey, pal, compadre, listen. Joey pushes him roughly to the ground. Cameron passes Joey to help Michael. You messed with the wrong guy, and now you're gonna pay you and that little bitch. Cameron, all right, like the that's sound enough. That. Okay, you crossed the line. Joey punches Cameron in the face. <clears throat> oh come on, get up, you little punk! He turns around just in time to catch one in the nose from a very pissed off Bianca. Ugh. Shit, Bianca, I'm shooting a nose spray ad tomorrow. <laughs> That's for making my date bleed. He belts him again. That's for my sister. And oh. again. And that's for me. She pushes oh. him onto the ground with Michael and Cameron. She and Mandela help their dates off the floor. Are you okay? Never been better. She kisses him and they begin to dance. Everyone slow dances as Joey groans on the floor and holds his crotch. Interior oh. hotel. <laughs> Interior hotel stairway night. Cat heads. Cat heads for the stairs and Patrick catches up to her as they reach the top. Would you give me a chance? You were paid to take me out by the one person I truly hate. I knew this was a setup. Cat, it wasn't like that, okay? Really? What was it like? A down payment and then a bonus for sleeping with me? No, I didn't care about the money, okay? I cared about you. You're so not who I thought you were. In desperation, he grabs her and kisses her. After a second, she jerks away and flees down the stairs and out of sight. Bianca comes running from behind Patrick, sees what has happened, and stops. She seems guilty now for dragging Kat to the prom and into this mess. Exterior, Stratford House Day. Kat is sitting on the balcony, railing with a sketchbook in hand. Bianca breezes in, bearing a cup of tea, and offers it to Kat. You want? Thanks. So, you sure you don't want to go sailing with us? It'll be fun. No, I'm fine. Look, I don't know if I ever thanked you for going last night, but it really meant a lot to me. I'm glad. Cameron comes jogging up the steps to the balcony, looking very chipper indeed. He notices the seriousness of the situation. Hey. Hey. You ready? Mm-hmm. See you later. 
Bye. Bianca and Cameron walk away. Is she okay? I hope so. They leave. Moments later, Walter enters the balcony from the house. Where's your sister going? She's meeting some bikers. Big ones. Full of sperm. Funny. <laughs> so tell me about this dance. Was it poppin'? <laughs> Which part? Part where Bianca beat the hell out of some guy. Bianca did what? What's the matter? I upset that I rubbed off on her. No, impressed. You know, fathers don't like to admit it when their daughters are capable of running their own lives. It means we've become spectators. Bianca still lets me play a few innings. You've had me on the bench for years. And when you go to Sarah Lawrence, I won't even be able to watch the game. Why not go? Oh boy, well don't tell me you've changed your mind. I already sent them a check. Cat overjoyed reaches and gives him a hug. English class day. Mr. Morgan stands at a podium and faces the class with an open book in front of him. All right, I assume everyone has found time to complete their poem, except for Mr. Donner. He begins to laugh, very pleased. Joey skulks. Who has an excuse? Shaft, lose the glasses. Joey reluctantly <laughs> removes his glasses to reveal severe facial damage. The class snickers. All right. Anyone brave enough to read theirs out loud? No one moves until Kat slowly raises her hand. I will. Lord, here we go. <laughs> Kat stands and walks to face the class. She clears her throat before reading <clears throat> from her notebook. I hate the way you talk to me. I hate the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. I hate your big dumb combat boots and the way you read my mind. I hate you so much it makes me sick. It even makes me rhyme. I hate it. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh. Even worse, when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. But mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. She looks directly at Patrick. He looks back, thoughtful. Then she walks out of the room. The rest of the class remains in stunned silence. Exterior parking lot after school. Students are leaving, Leave, uh, leaving school. Kat walks to her car alone. When she opens the door, she's greeted with the same Fender Stratocaster guitar that she, Patrick saw her playing at the store previously, reclining in the front seat. She picks it up slowly, inspecting every detail as, as Patrick leans in behind her. Nice, huh? A Fender Strat? Is this for me? Yeah, I thought you could use it, you know, when you start your band. Besides, I had some extra cash, you know, some asshole paid me to take out a really great girl. Is that right? Yeah, but I screwed up. I um, fell for her. Really? Well, it's not every day you find a girl who will flash someone to get you out of detention. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, he kisses her. You can't just buy me a guitar every time you screw up, you know? Yeah, I know. But then, you know, there's always drums and bass. Maybe even one day a tambourine. And don't just think you can... He kisses her to shut her up, not letting her end it this time. We pan out of the parking lot, across to the school buildings, and up to where the band, Letters to Cleo, is playing this very song on the roof. How did they get on the roof? It doesn't matter. The music plays, <laughs> the credits roll. The end. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you are oh my god. The commitment to everyone was beyond what I could have ever hoped for when I emailed you guys at two in the morning on Ambient to ask you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> this was an Ambient request? Oh my god. god. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to everyone watching. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the